To say the Charlotte Hornets had a rough offseason would be an understatement. Between the legal issues among players on the roster, or players that were on the roster, and losing their 21-year-old franchise player Lamelo Ball to an ankle injury, at least for the start of this season, it hasn't been the most ideal circumstances in Charlotte to say the least. And because of that, they are projected to be one of the worst teams in the league. However, to start the season, I've actually watched more Hornets games than I ever anticipated, and that has to do with the play of their recent free agent signing, Dennis Smith Jr., who's having a career resurgence. Dennis Smith Jr. is a player I've been a fan of for years now, even prior to the NBA. From his crazy mixtapes in high school, to his stellar freshman campaign at NC State, when he declared for the 2017 NBA Draft, I thought he was the second best prospect in that draft, behind only Markel Fultz. Yes, I had him ranked over Jason Tatum, which, in hindsight, is a bad take, and even going back and looking at the call to save both of them, it would have been a bad take at the time. But I was intrigued by Dennis Smith's alien level of athleticism at the time. I mean, he tore his ACL in high school and then came back with an even higher vertical. On top of that, he also started scoring and passing potential that you look for in stars, averaging 18 points per game and 6 assists per game during his alone season with the NC State Wolfpack. And he also showed more shooting potential than I thought he would in college as well as he's at 36% from 3 on nearly 5 attempts per game in college. So what I saw was a freak athlete point guard with high end scoring potential and the potential to be a good playmaker. And looking back on it, I do also think that him entering the NBA directly after Russell Westbrook won MVP influenced my quote unquote evaluation of him at the time. He would go 9th overall to the Dallas Mavericks and I thought that pick was an absolute steal at the time seeing that I thought he should have been a top 2 pick at the time and he immediately showed promise after a great showing in the Las Vegas Summer League where he earned all NBA Summer League first team honors and he was my pick to win rookie of the year especially with the weird circumstances around Markel Fultz's shoulder injury and Dennis would actually have an up and down rookie year. He did shoot below 40% from the field, but he also showed promise as well. He had 16 points and 10 assists in his NBA debut. He had a 21 point triple double at one point in his rookie season. And he also had a 22 point game where he went 4 for 9 from 3 against that Warrior Super Team. Despite the inefficiency, he still averaged 15.2 points per game, 3.8 rebounds per game, and 5.2 assists per game in under 30 minutes per game. He finished top 5 in rookie of the year voting and was named to the second team all rookie. And I still believed in his super high potential at the time, or at least my perceived super high potential that he had at the time. On top of that, I thought Dallas made a move in the 2018 draft that would set them up to be a future dynasty, as they traded up from the 5th pick to 3rd pick with the Atlanta Hawks to select Luka Doncic, the generational prospect that in my opinion is the best prospect I've ever evaluated, and I don't think we'll ever see a prospect as good as him again in my opinion. Yes, even when you factor in Victor Wimbanyama. So the Mavericks had a backcourt of two players that I thought had superstar upside, and to me, I thought they just set themselves up to be contenders for years to come with a potential superstar duo of Luka Doncic and Dennis Smith Jr. However, that's not how this has turned out at all. While Luka has developed into a superstar, has lived up to his generational talent billing, and is likely an MVP favorite this season, Dennis Smith Jr. really has done none of that. In fact, I would say he's done the complete opposite of that. He never really fit well with Luka, so he was traded to the Knicks for Kristaps Porzingis, and it was downhill from that point on due to confidence issues, among other things. It got to the point where he was out of the rotation and eventually traded to the Detroit Pistons, where he wasn't good, but I will say he did show signs of potential as far as being a rotation connecting piece. However, the Pistons chose not to re-sign him because they invested a lot into guards in both the lottery of the 2020 and the 2021 draft, so there's really no need for having Dennis Smith Jr. on the roster. So we ended up on the Portland Trailblazers for the 2021-2022 season, where again he wasn't good, but I do think he showed signs of promise as a connecting passer. And something I did notice when watching both Detroit tape and Portland tape from him was he became a really good point of attack defender. 
but due to a UCL tear that would sideline him in February, it would lead to the Portland Trail Blazers eventually waiving him. At this point, it looked like the end of the road for Dennis Smith Jr. He never really showed any shooting promise, which as a scoring point guard at 6'2", you have to be a good shooter to be a star. Athleticism isn't enough to reach that kind of outcome. For example, the reason I view Scoot Henderson as one of the best point guard prospects of his generation is because on top of being one of the most athletic prospects this game has ever seen, to the point where he can play a style of game that's more suited for someone who's 5 to 6 inches taller than him at a high level, he also has shown legit promise as a mid-range suitor. The numbers suggest and the tape backs up the fact that, yeah, he's a good mid-range suitor at 17 years old in the G League and also has promising indicators with his shooting range, touch around the basket, free throw numbers, and confidence. Compare this to DSJ, who really only showed shooting promise in his lone season at NC State. In the NBA, his free throw numbers were mostly below 70%, and his finishing around the basket was very inconsistent as well. He would have the highlight dunks, but he would also have plenty of moments where he would attack the basket without a plan and look confused trying to finish around the basket in mid-air, despite being one of the best vertical athletes in NBA history, having pretty good body control. His feel for the game as a finisher wasn't the best to say the least. On top of that, despite having great athletic gifts, he never quite was able to have the slicing gravity that an athlete of his caliber at the point guard spot usually has, or even scoring gravity in general, and that was due to the inconsistencies as a finisher and a suitor, which in turn limited his pretty good passing skills and only got more limited the less aggressive he got as a scorer. Plus, teams not being afraid to foul him when he attacked the basket because he was a poor free throw suitor played a factor into this as well. So, I basically described why Dennis Smith Jr. never became the superstar I thought he could be, which I'm not going to hold against him because that was just a really bad take for me at the time and I didn't know as much about basketball as I do now. But I did also talk about why he never really worked out in the NBA. But he has gotten one last chance with his hometown team, the Charlotte Hornets, and it's safe to say he's taken advantage of this opportunity. I know it's early on in the season, but I have been very encouraged by DSJ. He's averaged 12.3 points per game, 4.1 rebounds per game, and 6.4 assists per game on 48.7% from the field over the first seven games of the season. Now, his free throw numbers aren't good at 57.1%, but watching the tape, I do feel like you get the factor in that he's barely gotten to the line so far, so it's not a good sample to look at his free throw numbers with, but he's in his three-pointers. In fact, he's made at least one in five out of the seven games he's played this season, and I do think that he can be a solid shooter. I don't know if 44.4% is sustainable from three, but his form looks really good. I would say the form is like the best it's looked in his career, which is really encouraging because this offseason, there was a video of him taking jump shots with a form that looked awful, so... It's glad to see that that wasn't something that would remain with him throughout this season. But the thing for me that I think you look at tape and see a sustainable improvement from him, even in just seven games, is his finishing ability. He's still by far one of the most athletic players in the league. His first step is matched only by the most athletic guards the sport has to offer, and he still is probably the best vertical athlete in the league. But his feel for the game as a finisher improving the way it has is very encouraging. He's under much more control when attacking the basket now. His touch around the basket is also a lot better. Finishing improvements are something you can take a small sample size from and put a lot of stock into it in my opinion. Because unlike shooting where you can go on fluky hot streaks where a player just catches fire but it doesn't reflect any real improvements they've made as a shooter, being a good finisher around the basket is about the tools and the skills you have that make you that player. So to me, that makes it much more sustainable. It's why you don't really hear about finishing hot streaks around the basket. And Dennis has some of the improvements in his finishing tools that I think are very sustainable. You just don't randomly go on fluke runs where you show control around the basket at high speeds and have good touch around the basket. Those are things you develop through hard work and this improvement has been key for Dennis reviving his NBA career. 
because of this improvement as a finisher around the basket, it has made him a player who teams have to focus on more, which means it opens up his passing ability as well. On top of that, his point of attack defense is still really good. So when I look at Dennis Smith Jr., I see the signs of improvement that will keep him in the league, will likely get him a multi-year contract after this season, and moving forward, I think it's safe to say these improvements are going to be the thing that have revived his career. I don't think Dennis Smith Jr. will be a starter. I definitely don't think he will be the player I thought he would be entering the league. But he's a good defender, good passer, elite athlete, shown the improvement signs needed as a finisher, and potentially has shown signs of being an avid shooter. He's only 24 turning 25 years old in the next few weeks, so he is somebody that I think that given that he's shown a real improvement in my opinion and the skills that he needed to, I do think there's a little more room for him to potentially grow. But at the very least, I see the baseline for a player who can start if needed. However, to me, I think he will be somebody that revived his career as more of a potential high-end rotation player than a full-time starter. A guy you want running the second unit of your offense. Teams need that kind of player. And based off the signs I see early on tape from this season, Dennis Smith Jr. can be that for a very long time. But I would love to hear what you think about this in the comment section below. Do you think this is a fluke? Do you think that Dennis Smith Jr. can keep this up? What are your thoughts about Dennis Smith Jr. entering the league? Love to hear all that in the comment section below. Leave some feedback. Leave some thoughts. Try to be nice if you can. Uh, but yeah, have a nice day and I'll see you guys in the next one.